Let's welcome uh, Jeremy. Hello. Hey all. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, joining welcome, you from welcome. joining you from Austin, Texas. I've uh, Brilliant. let me. Th I, I'll, I'll come back here so you can uh, you can enjoy the full uh, the full effect. Is it a nice daylight still? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm very much still in my uh, still in my pajamas. Hello to very um, good, very good. It's getting late at night now. Very dark, so yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Good morning to our folks on the on the West Coast. Uh, good afternoon for uh, people who are near me, and I suppose good evening for uh, um, anyone who's uh, way west of the way east of the water. Yes. Okay. Very good. Welcome again. And uh, are you ready to give a talk? Yes. Okay. You go live now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's see if we um, can give you my uh, give you my deck. All right, uh, as was mentioned, uh, Jeremy Tanner, Penguin on the internets. Uh, hello, uh, hello to all of my Python friends around the world. Hello friends from the future who are watching this on, on video. And yeah, let's talk a bit about how um, I've been able to get around using Python. There we are, that's the... Uh, that's the deck. And so uh, these days, I am uh, very much at home all the time doing uh, some some pairing, either with the uh, the tiniest pie lady here, or uh, working with my team at Equinix Metal, bringing the, uh, the distributed team, bringing the good folks of the community, bare metal and bare metal accessories. So uh, if we go back a, a few years, I would get around town using a service called car to go Now, car to go allowed me to rent vehicles for, uh, rent them by the minute. Uh, I'm usually paying just uh, 30, maybe 40 cents a minute for uh, something classy, like, a, like the car here. Uh, while, uh, while enjoying the mobile application, I also found out that car to go had an API that was able to be used. And so uh, anytime an API is exposed, I like to take and, uh, take and explore it and see what it has for me. Uh, I set up a uh, machine in the cloud and started every uh, five minutes or so making an API call that says, where are all the cars in Austin? And what came back every time was a list of JSON locations. Uh, looked uh, quite a bit like this. It would have uh, maybe uh, at the peak of it, uh, low 200s of locations of all the cars that would be available for me to go and unlock with my phone and drive myself by the minute, either uh, downtown at the beginning of the day or at home if we were getting towards the, uh, towards the end of the day. And so in human readable language, it would give you the address of where the vehicle is, um, its geographic coordinates, uh, the engine type it has, whether it's an internal combustion engine or some of the cars were electric cars, great for the envi environment and fun to drive. Um, how the previous person who had driven that car had rated the exterior condition, um, how much fuel it has in it. This particular car is low on fuel and so may not be the best one to grab. Um, if the, uh, what condition the interior was in, uh, the license plate of the vehicle and uh, if you need a smartphone to unlock it, almost all of them you did. And the VIN number of the vehicle, which is particularly interesting because in, addi in addition to being a unique identifier, you can pull a lot of information, um, who made the car, well, what factory that car was made in, um, how large it is, uh, how many seats it has, the size of the engine. And so uh, even though it doesn't say the type of the car here, you can, we'll be able to um, look at how we're able to extrapolate that uh, a little bit later. And so when looking over the numbers of car to go, I wanted to look at maybe um, maybe just a week's worth of a, maybe just a week's worth of data. And so if we pop over to this notebook that I've uh, run already, uh, I, have, I have insight into the directory where those snapshots are being taken. Uh, you'll see at the tail of those snapshots, we have um, for every API call for the available cars in Austin, uh, has been part of the file name 
is a timestamp, um, number of seconds since uh, the epic. And so that's how we'll keep all those organized. Uh, we'll list how many of them there are, uh, and looks like about 16,000 of them, which ends up being two months of data. And so that's probably way too much. Uh, it's not quite necessary. We can probably look make a data frame. We'll be using pandas. And that data frame will take in those things that you saw that were in the... Uh, uh, in the JSON for every vehicle location. So the the date that that, um, that, that vehicle was seen, um, where it was seen, uh, its engine type, and, and the rest of the things from that JSON. Uh, we're going to slice just the last 2016 uh, uh, sightings off the end of that list of collected files because 2016 uh, divided by uh, 12 to get an hour divided by 24 divided by seven. That's exactly one week's worth of car sightings. And so from there, we will take and import those into a data frame. Um, had pre-run it because it was taking you know, about three and a half minutes. And in the interest of time, certainly more interesting if we uh, if we take and uh, have that done already. And our data frame looks very much like this. So over the course of um, over the course of that time, looks down here we saw four hundred thousand different uh, different car occurrences, and then um, since the VIN is a unique identifier, looks like there are uh, if we run uh, on that data frame uh, VIN dot unique. It'll tell us how many unique VINs were seen and 270 of them were seen. So there's 270 different cars at the time operating in the Austin area. Um, and then going back to try and figure out what model the cars are, um, the first uh, we'll take and uh, convert that VIN number to a string, slice off the first five characters. And the first five characters can be plugged into a um, of indicator. And that vindicator will take and then um, tell you what sort of uh, what sort of vehicle you're working with. Um, in this case, those three are uh, two Mercedes and one of the uh, one of the smart four twos. And so we'll come back and look. So uh, have 400,000 different locations of the cars. That's in, that's somewhat interesting. There happen to be 270 different cars that the service is running in uh, Austin. Also all right. Uh, so many of them are those tiny cars, the smart four twos that are um, little, uh, little two seat hatchbacks. Um, if you're looking for a Mercedes Benz CLA or GLA, the sedan or the wagon, there's uh, going to be uh, many fewer of those. Um, in that uh, Pandas data frame, pulled out the time, uh, the timestamps where the most vehicles were seen. That happened to be a series of uh, a series of API calls that happened between between 3 a.m. and 4:45 a.m. on uh, Wednesday morning. That means the network is uh, when everyone's sleeping. That's a good bet that 80% of the network is uh, up and available at the um, at any given time. So even though we saw 270 cars, um, that means that about 35 of them at this point were uh, out for maintenance, out of gas, um, had been crashed, uh, stolen, uh, or otherwise had met a, a, a terribly unfortunate end. Uh, the time when uh, I saw the fewest cars was the API call that was made at uh, 5.20 in the afternoon on Friday. And at that point, 58% uh, of the uh, network was available. And so uh, that meant most of the cars were probably being driven by folks. If it was 5.20 in the afternoon on Friday, most of those were probably being driven home to uh, uh, most of those were probably being driven home by folks who were uh, looking to commute. And so even at its lowest point, if the network has 
158 cars available, that does seem like a lot. I should be able to get around. But we were talking about uh, uh, we were talking about latitudes and longitudes, which means these cars have locations associated to them, which raises the question: What good is having 150, 158 cars if they're 10 miles away? The point of having the car is not having to walk. And so, um, as we saw earlier, not so much the full story. Um, I'm looking for a car. I find an empty parking spot. This gives me just a little bit of the availability anxiety. I'm now trying to figure out when is the last car going to leave downtown? And so to try and figure that out, um, mapping is probably a good idea. And so to get into my maps, I needed to uh, use a service called Cardo, uh, mostly because I am not particularly good at JavaScript. And I like services that can um, make the points dance over time. Um, fun visualizations are nice. I did catch Martin's talk a little bit earlier, and I'll be reviewing it a little bit later. Um, these seem to have a, a, an excellent amount of, uh, of GeoPython tricks that I'm uh, looking forward to digging further into. Um, but it's also, yeah, it's also possible to do it in the in a terribly hacky manner, which is, uh, I guess, what we'll look at now. And so, after I took and um, and uh, used that data frame to uh, do a little bit of analysis, um, it didn't make sense again to every time I wanted to use the places where those cars were um, re-import the all of their locations from the 2,000 or the 16,000 different uh, snapshots that had been collected. And so uh, Pandas is excellent at moving that data and throwing that data frame to um, any format that you'd like. In this case, it's going to be comma-separated values called avcars for available cars. Over here, it's Pandas time again. Pandas time again may be a little bit larger. And so after bringing in pandas, I'm going to take those car locations and bring them into a new data frame. Look at that data frame, and it looks good. Uh, take those locations, and here we're going to do the uh, a hacky little cheat. So um, we have a magic number being subtracted from one of the columns in our data frame, the date, that number of um, that number of seconds. 18,000 is the number of seconds in five hours. And those five hours are what we want to subtract from UTC to bring it in line with uh, the central time zone. Uh, again, in Martin's talk, I saw some uh, better ways to handle time zones. In this case, since uh, Cardo, the service we're going to look at using, wants um, both a, uh, a year, month, day instead of those seconds, We'll move the time zone. We'll do a two date time to uh, bring us over to uh, the correct format. And now we will look and see if that C date that we were, that column that we added is going to be in the right format. And it certainly is. We'll take that and then throw that back to another CSV. That CSV will be uploaded to the Cardo service, which I had done earlier again, in the interest of time. And that will give us a beautiful graph here. Beautiful graph of places. Beautiful graph of places called a map. And so this map is Austin, the greater Austin area. Uh, right now, it's 319 in the morning uh, central time. And so each of these blue dots is the location of one of those vehicles. The lat long just dropped right down on there. And what you'll notice is this area in the middle, about one square mile uh, north of the water, west of the freeway, is downtown Austin, uh, where I would often work, uh, meet friends, go for drinks, comedy shows and things, and need a vehicle. And right now, there is not a single vehicle in that little donut there. And so I'm going to try and figure out if I play these, uh, if I play these points, um, at what time do people start driving those cars into the city from the residential areas that they're parked in? And we'll play that now. So it's four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. Looks like around six in the morning, people start getting to work. 
those vehicles start coming into the core of the city, 11 o'clock, it's 12 o'clock, one o'clock. And you see over the course of the day, those vehicles at the end of the day start to, uh, start to disappear again from downtown. Now it's seven o'clock, eight o'clock, and, uh, and those cars are gone. So if we wait for the time to loop back around again, let's look, uh, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, good, 11 o'clock. And so two o'clock, all right, six o'clock, uh, uh, 16 o'clock, that's uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I'll still be able to get a car, still be able to get a car. Uh, five o'clock, they start getting a little bit scarce. At 621, there's only one car left and it's all the way across downtown. This means when I leave work, it needs to be before six o'clock if I'm going to look to collect a car. Now, uh, that helped me figure out when I needed to be um, uh, out of work to avoid the game of, um, avoid that game of musical chairs that happens when all the cars are gone. And, uh, and I continued. So later on though, I moved and I moved right, right about here. Uh, as you'll see with the uh, points dancing again, the cars never go there. The reason the cars never go there is because that's outside of the car to go service area. So I was going to have to find, have to find a new way to get around. So the be that was act a, um, how I paid $0 for parking car to go has agreements with most of the, um, city governments that it operates in that allow you to park the car in any legal spot. This was when it was operating. The service disappeared about uh, disappeared about a year ago. But you only paid for the the minutes that you drove, never for parking, which was a which was a great setup. But again, I lost it when I moved. So when I moved a little bit south, it was time to uh, time to figure out how to get a car. And it would be great if Python could get me a car. A car like I used to have. This is the Mark III GTI and a younger, lighter version of me. Uh, this, this was about 15 years ago. So I loved that car. It was a perfect mix of fun and practicality. Uh, I, I, I suppose it's the, the Python of cars, the, what with the fun and practicality and, um, and, and space for everything in it. Uh, so so I, think I, want, I think I want another one of these. So they come in two different versions, um, of which the two-door, which you see here, definitely my favorite. Um, it's because I'm fairly tall. And the problem with the four-door, as you'll see with the, um, uh, you'll see with the headrest in this car, the B-pillar, when I turn to look, B-pillar directly in the face, which is not a great time. Um, the larger door makes it easier to get in and out of, and it's just a better look. There's a difficulty though. Uh, Volkswagen stopped importing the two-door GTI to the United States in 2017. And so if I want one, I'm going to have to find a used one. Um, that's not really a problem. People sell their used cars all the time. If only there were some sort of list of people with things that they wanted to trade for money. Um, and there is, it's Craigslist. And so um, we'll uh, try and, and search Craigslist now. Uh, this is Craigslist for Austin. We're looking for GTIs. There's a handful of them. Um, the, GTI, the GTI I want though is a 2016. The reason I want a 2016 is because that's the last year of the two-door and so anything newer won't be uh won't even possibly be that model and it's the first year of the new electronics package that i was hoping to uh hoping to have in the car and so it looks like in the city of austin there are two of these cars which is somewhat useful one of these is a two-door i'm not in love with the silver we'll we'll try and figure it out there's probably craigslists in in other places though. So if we were to look at a different region, like maybe, like maybe Boston, like maybe Boston spelled correctly. 
yep, they have a couple, a four door, a four door, a four door, still not interested. This is going to take a very long time. Um, and so there should be some sort of way where, uh, some sort of way where we can look at a lot of places. What places does Craigslist operate in? Okay, there's, there's these cities here in the sidebar, um, about 23 of them, but there should be more, there should be more cities than that. I've certainly been to more places than that. Um, there's a list of U S states. Okay. Getting warmer, um, Canada too hard to import a car from Canada. Definitely too hard to import worldwide cars. Um, yeah. What's so in California, we'll see that when you open the California page, it will tell you where the major cities are. So Los Angeles is bolded. That's a major city. Uh, Orange County is an area bolded major city, Sacramento, San Diego. Excellent. So the bolded places hold that thought. All right. So we've decided on Craigslist. We know that we need more than 23 cities. Um, in that initial list of 23 cities, places we're missing like Kansas City, uh, St. Louis, uh, there could be GTIs in both of those places. Uh, we, we drilled into the state lists and we found that uh, if you look for the bolded cities, those are going to be the big ones, the most notable in that area. And um, I know that Craigslist doesn't really want you to do this, so they don't have an API. That would be much easier, but we're going to have to do some web scraping. So we're going to pair uh, requests with beautiful soup and let's head back to our notebooks. All right, where do we find ourselves? So the search string we were looking for, when we use that search string, we found those two cars. Okay, excellent. Um, remember the search string uh, looks like the, the city or the locale uh, is a subdomain, um, cars, trucks, automobiles, uh, search in that uh, category, uh, the name of the vehicle that you're looking for, uh, the beginning and end years that you'll accept, perfect. We'll bring in, we'll import requests, we'll import beautiful soup for parsing, and we'll look at the homepage of Craigslist. Beautiful soup will give us a soup of uh, soup of tags that we can then uh, move through since that's much more structured now. Uh, the sidebar is a series of unnumbered lists in a uh, class called uh, AC item. We'll look at that list and we'll see the same things that we uh, saw on the website, but in this case, uh, as HTML tags. When we look at the uh, first set of those uh, tags, that's Atlanta, Austin, Boston, Chicago. Okay, that's the 23 um, list of cities. Those are the ones that we're not particularly, um, we need more. Those are the states. Okay, perfect. Find every link from, the, um, from that series of states in that uh, unnumbered list. Great, we will take those, um, and those look like, you know, that'll give us California. Uh, the fourth state is California. That's a link that will then, yep, kick us over and we'll take, that's the page that we want to uh, rip through in the interest of time. We're going to rip through. The important part is that we're looking for a bold tag wrapped around the city. If we find that, we're going to take and um, grab the name of that city and dump it into this pile of locations. This pile of locations is now a much longer list where we're going to find cars from. And we're going to now use one of my favorite web frameworks, handcrafted artisanal HTML tags. It's filthy, but also fun. Now, we have a print statement in here. What that's going to do is give us a quick and dirty uh, progress bar. As that gets closer to the, uh, as that gets closer to the bottom, it's taking and running that same uh, search string through all of those cities. And then it's going to give us back a HTML page, which I'll then kick open. And those are all the vehicles that are available on Craigslist in all of those cities. Now, if I do the same thing, 
but this time looking for images as uh, if I pull the uh, class that's result image gallery on the search results page, uh, there is a uh, tag in there and I can pull that out and that'll give me the image. And so instead of looking over the, um, the text, which is somewhat useful, I'm a very visual person. For that, I'm going to want to see a pile of pictures, maybe wrapped in links. And so here, these are, these are what all the cars available for sale on Craigslist in the United States look like. This looks like a two-door one. If I click through, I can contact the owner and maybe get just a little bit closer to the car of my dreams. Now, that's exactly what happened. I found the exact car I was looking for. This is me inside my car. Now, I ended up finding it on, on an enthusiast forum instead of in the, uh, in, the, in the Craigslist ads, but looking through Craigslist that way did help inform my understanding of what things cost. I'll be around in the Discord and on Twitter. Uh, I'm Penguin in both places. Thank you so much. Amazing presentation at perfect timing. <laughs> uh, well done. Do we have any questions, guys? Just give me a second. I'll have a look at our YouTube channel. I think there is a delay with YouTube, so question might still come. But please be on Discord and make sure that you answer questions if there are any questions after that. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. To, happy to answer I any actually, questions. I actually have you. a question myself. Very yes. Basic one. Yeah, so this application is like it has a perfect practical relevance. I was just wondering, how did you come to this idea of getting, uh, you know, getting starting, like, you know, researching this kind of problem? Like, it's more of practical relevance for yourself or, you know? Uh, so very much so. I I'd wanted to, um, uh, I'd wanted to find a car like the one I had. I couldn't buy it new. And uh, Python is sort of a, a hammer I'm, I know how to swing. And so the, uh, I like notebook driven development because you're like, okay, especially when doing web scraping, like, okay, well, look what's available. Okay, well, add a little bit more onto that, add a little bit more onto that, add a little bit more onto that until you have a, this sort of ball of madness. Yeah, and, uh, and you end up uh, having a lot. <laughs> And perfect use um, of Panda as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, uh, I'm very interested to go back and uh, and rewatch the uh, Martin's talk that I that I saw earlier. Yes. He did a lot with um, uh, geographic locations, and uh, I yeah. think I could, uh, no, I could clean mine up quite a bit. Your, your code. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, being here, and uh, you know, please ask questions on the Discord. Uh, everyone who's watching it. Okay. Cheers. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Enjoy the rest of the day. Cheers. Okay, guys, I hope you're enjoying it. We have a couple more minutes before we move into our next talk. So I'm going to uh, entertain you with some uh, sponsors videos.